Before I do anything else, I should save my work. To do this, I'll simply click the Save button, give my design a name, and make sure it's going to the proper project. This will update the file and create a new version. As Autodesk Fusion 360 works, it's constantly keeping track of versions and it has a built-in data management system that would allow me to go back to an earlier version of a file and follow a design inspiration into another direction. Now I want to go ahead and add a couple of things into my design that will help me control things a little later on. To do this, I'm going to go back to the root of my design and activate the overall design. Then, I'm going to go to the Modify panel, go to the pull-down, and go to Change Parameters. I can add parameters for the overall model or for a specific side. I'm going to add a user parameter, one called Material, and I think I'm going to make this out of 3 quarter inch material. So I can just type a value of 0.75. And if I want, I can go ahead and add a comment to help others understand what this parameter means. And then maybe I'll add another one for seat width. One thing to be aware of is case sensitivity to make sure that you aren't frustrated because you're not getting access to a parameter because you're not using the proper capitalization, spelling, or special characters. I'll click OK, and now I've created my parameters. Now I want to create 3D geometry. I'll reactivate my side component and either start the extrude tool or I can use the press pull tool from the marking menu. I'll drag this value out to whatever direction or size that I want and I'll go to the distance field in my extrude dialog and type in material and as I begin to type in material it offers me that user parameter. I'll select it and click OK. Alright, so now that we have our sketch active again Let's go ahead and add a couple of other things. I'd like to create a new sketch right on the side of my model. Here, I want to create a line that comes down a distance, create another arc, and one more arc. Just kind of a little more arbitrary here. All right, when I'm done, I can cancel. What I've done now is created what will eventually be a path that I want to create a series of rectangles, cut out notches for my slats to connect into the sides with. So I've created this pattern so that I can get an idea of what angle I want those slats to be in. I'm going to stop my sketch and start another sketch. Selecting that same face. In Fusion 360, any feature can use multiple sketches, and the same sketch can be used across multiple components. It's a very valuable option. I'll rough in a rectangle here. I could have also used the rectangle tool, and perhaps should have, because my rectangle drawing skills are somewhat lacking. I'll go ahead and assign some constraints, such as perpendicularity. It will let me know if I've already got that. I'll lock that in and just triple check. Yep, that should be an error as well. Now I'll apply some dimensions. The first one I'll do will be an overall size. As I drag this out, I'll get the height or the width. But what I'd like to get is the aligned dimension. And I want to make this just a little over 2 inches. I'll say, let's just go 2.1. Then I'll pick this edge and this edge so that I don't have to choose a line because it will be parallel lines. And I'll take this and tell it is material plus 0.1. So I'm creating a little room around this for the size of my hole. Now I could go ahead and constrain this to these edges and do other work, but I'm going to stop at this point. Again, just trying to capture an idea. So I'll use the press pull tool to select my profile. If I drag one direction, it's going to add material to my side. If I drag the other direction, it will automatically start cutting material. It will change the operation to cut automatically for me. What I'll do is make a change to the extents and say that I want it to cut through all. That way, if I change the thickness of the material, 
it will always be cut through. Another option would be to set the extents to distance and set the distance value to material. That's another way of approaching it. Okay, now I've created my block. I'll expand out my sketches folder, make my sketch visible again, and I'll go to my create pull down and tell it that I'd like to create a pattern and a pattern on a path. I'll zoom in on my extrusion and tell it what I'd like to pattern is not a face or a body. I'd like to pattern a feature. That feature will be this extrusion, which I can select directly from the timeline at the bottom of the screen. And I'll set my path for the direction value. Now what I can do is grab this arrow and drag it out along my path set the number of instances to seven. I can see a faint preview. It does not look like these are going to be quite what I want. So I'll tell it to go ahead and keep the position optimized. I'm sorry. I'll set the orientation to path direction, pardon me. And just to keep track of how far I'm spreading these apart, I'm gonna go ahead and put a dimensional value in here. I'll just go ahead and use 51. And I'll click OK. So now I have seven slots cut into my side along a 52 inch path that follows this curve. I'll turn the sketch off. Now what I'd like to do is just add a couple of fillets to my model. Again, from the marking menu, I can select press pull, grab these corners, push that radius in till it looks about the way I want it to. I can put a precise value in or just accept it. Repeat the press tool operation, grab my edges, top and bottom, and set in a value, say material divided by two. Now I have the geometry of my side pretty well set. So I'll go ahead and save my model again. And now I'm ready to start creating new components for my design. 